Hey folks, welcome back to The Portable Gamer. Welcome back to ETS2. And we are continuing our trip around Europe. We are in Tornio? Tornio? So many ways to say names when you're traveling. I'm going with Tornio. It's in Finland, and we're going to continue making our way down toward the Baltic states. Yeah. That's the goal anyway. I'll get us on the road here. And then I will tell you, is that right? That's right. I can't zoom in there, but I think that's, that's what we want. Okay, Finland, Sweden, that'll take us all the way down, not quite across. I think that's going to be about as far as we can get. Nine tons, Helsinki, anywhere else. No. Well, it pays the best. Let's do it. 34 minutes. Hope we don't have to get too far to get to it. Let's take a look. If we have to go... Oh, it's right around the corner. Perfect. Okay. So a few things are a little bit out of whack here, and when I tell you why, it'll all make sense. Right, rolling. So we are going to try to drive in the daytime. I, I slept through the night a few times, and hopefully we'll have a little bit more daylight. I've had some people say they like the nighttime videos, I've had some people say, man, I can't see nothing. All I can see is your dashboard, and that's not, you know, that's not super cool. So, I'm going to try to do this one in daylight. And we are heading south, south, so the days will be getting longer. And at some point, as we're heading south, I will pull, uh, you know, I'm using the Grimes Mild Winter. At some point, I will pull that. Can't see the light over the line. I'm a hot mess today. At some point I will pull the, the Grimes Mild Winter as we get down south. And that will make our days even longer. So we'll be driving more in daylight. Whoa. Easy there, lead foot. Okay. So here's what's going on. You know I had a, a hot mod. I had a mod conflict somewhere. And I'm I was trying to track it down. Well, I finally found it. And you know my policy is I don't like to I don't like to talk about mod problems because I I hate to make it sound like I'm saying somebody has created or written a bad mod when I don't know where they have or not. It's most likely me. And it almost always is. It's the way I have things set up. But in this case it turns out there was a legitimately um, there's nothing wrong with it. It was just something that happened with a patch, and you know how that mod lifestyle goes. Right. So, now it may give us trailer options, and it does. Fantastic. Now let's wait for a crash, because... Waiting? Yes. Because that's where the problem was. It was with some trailers. Now, there is... A, a, an unbelievable amount of detail that goes into these trailers and some of the trailers that I have been running spawn specifically in different shapes and sizes in different places so I guess that's to make them compliant Ooh, yeah I do like the doubles and Finland is kind of a Finland is kind of a nightmare to drive tandem in so let's do it. Let's live the nightmare. So there are different like MOT regulations and different MOT rules for trailers in different countries. And the way that this trailer pack, well, there's several of them actually, and a couple of them are by the same developer. I'm not trying to be, I sound like I'm being all like man of mystery right now. And that's not it at all. I'm not 
you know. You know. So, just an amazing amount of detail, and the way that the, the mod is set up, the trailer doesn't spawn if it's a trailer that would not spawn you know, MOT compliant in that country. And then you've got your Scandinavian DLC, and then you've got your pro mods, and there's just an unbelievable amount of code going on behind the scenes. And now you add these trailers, and these trailers are looking at the map to sort of see, you know, where where is the driver? I'm the driver. Where's the driver? What can we spawn? What can we not spawn? And then on top of that, there are always some things happening with patches. Um, relating to like advanced coupling and don't hit me advanced coupling and steering trailers steerable axles all that stuff so that's what happened there was a mod that i guess was good and then got patched over not by the developer but by scs and then it didn't work so good no more so i had to pull that out and it was just one component of a larger trailer package I was really thankful for that and that was the struggle because these trailers uh, I have three three trailer packs that I love and I didn't want to pull any of them out so it's this and uh, you if you mod your game if you mod ETS you know exactly what I'm talking about you have something that you love so much and it's like ah but it crashes my game well then I'll just restart you know I, I'm not giving up my mod so that's where I was. I was not going to give up these trailer packs, and I feel super fortunate that I only had to pull out like one relatively small component of one trailer pack. I got to keep all the trailers, I just had to pull out a dolly. So, and then I moved some other things around because I found a couple threads on the forum, you know, like you do, you say you got mod order, you got pro mods, you, you got you running this here, you got your physics mod, you, it's, a, it's a lifestyle. It is that mod lifestyle. It's like a drug. So, I did all that, and then I went back into the game. I relaunched the game, and it said, uh, game reset detected, or game change detected. We're going to put you back in your hometown, which is what it does when it, I guess it had something to do with the companies, maybe? I don't know. Because, you know, there's company, like mod, mod companies, and changes the dispatch and various things so put me back in Rames. I didn't own a garage in Tornio I had a save game I mean I could have just gone back to my save game but every time I tried to reorder them the mods put them in a new order then it did the same thing so save game wasn't helping me and so what I finally did was I just opened up the developer console and I teleported to Tornio since we didn't own a garage there anyway but Basically, uh, I don't want to say through no fault of our own, because it's totally my fault. Got to run these mods. So that's on me. Uh, but what I, what I said, you know, early days when the channel first kind of launched was, I'm not going to teleport. I'm not going to fast travel. And I guess I, what I meant when I said that was, I'm not going to do that for convenience. Like, I'm going to stick with the, I'm going to stick with the immersion. So if we're in Tornio, we should be in Tornio. We're not going to fast travel back to Reims just because we're tired of being in Finland. I guess that's what I meant. So, you know, I had to think, and I decided that teleporting back to Tornio is not breaking the immersion. If anything, it's maintaining the immersion because Tornio is where we were. So I fast traveled to Tornio. I repaired the truck because we had like 2% just road damage. And then I did multiple sleep cycles so it would be daylight. And the great thing about that is we have four drivers on. So when I take a few days off like that, my drivers keep working and they keep making us money. So we're, we're making some money. Now I did, you know, uh, you may have noticed a few episodes ago we had like 220,000. And then we slept for three days and now we have 145,000. Well, I 
messed with the truck and I put some things on and then I decided uh, I didn't like them and I took them off and I had to rebuy the other things and it just ate up a lot of money so that's why the uh, the dollar total is low but bottom line is we're back in Torneo in our Scania 164 uh, switched to 6x4 pull, pulled one axle off the steering axle kept the same motor and now we got our tandem load and we're going to haul this down across Finland which should be if I know Finland, this is going to be mighty interesting. And unfortunately, we're going to have to do part of it in the dark. You know, I'm doing my best to not drive in the dark, but hey, man, it's part of the game. So there'll be less of this as we move south, but for now, there's going to be some night driving. Um, and there's also, now I've got, I don't know what your kung fu is like in your world but you know you can split your profile using the SCS decryptor you can split your profile and then you basically have two identical profiles and you can take them in different directions so what I do with this profile that I have right here which is my career mode profile what I'll do periodically is I will split it and then I will take the the copy that I made of it and I will experiment with it a little bit just so I sort of know what to expect in the coming episodes as far as changes to the truck or you know where where we want to go on the map next and that sort of thing so I'll experiment with that a little bit and then I'll delete that profile not like a not like a crazy person but just I don't need it anymore it's only a copy of this one um, call it test profile or research profile what have you so I did that and I found some things that I've sort of seen them around since I've been on ETS 2 I've seen them around but I never really got into them you know and it was just there was kind of a uh, I don't know I, I guess I had like a block you know I'd look at it and I'm like ah no nah, that doesn't that doesn't do it for me it doesn't light my fire so just for kicks, I, I did try out some of these things that I had been avoiding. And you know what, let me pause right here because I want to show you something. I know you saw that picket fence as we were driving under that bridge. And I am, my scaling is at 300%. Uh, Anti-aliasing is off as per NVIDIA. Everything else is high except for my mirrors. I do have my mirrors turned down. But everything else is high, right? We may not be ultra, but we're always high. Wait, what? So when you see some some graphics, uh, some disappointing graphics like that, trust me, I am seeing it too. I can't go to 400% scaling, but uh, and I'm uh, obviously I'm not 4K yet, but. I, I, it bothers me more than it bothers you. Uh, probably. I don't know. Maybe it bothers you a whole hell of a lot. But it, when I see things like that, it, it is frustrating for me. I want these videos to be... Well, ideally, they'll be 4K quality. Uh, within, i uh, say, three to six months, we should be 4K. But for right now, we're 1080p. And that's just that's just where we're at. So, uh, so I had that parallel profile, and I experimented with some things that I've seen but never done. And no, I didn't need to turn there. Okay, and uh, that's going to be coming up in some in some not too distant future episodes. Uh, you know, we we want to build the Madster MAN. I've got a beautiful uh, DAF XF 105 uh, with the open pipe sound and. Oh, it's just, it's a gorgeous truck. I want to drive that a little bit. And then I've got some other really cool mods. I've got that little Mercedes, uh, the, the Antos. Antos? Antos. Uh, well, however you say it, I got one. And I love it. Now, I think I've said this also in earlier episodes. That is, to me, I think of that more as a uh, day trip truck. So, I don't know that we would... Oops. I don't know that we would be driving that out here in the wilds of Finland, but I definitely want to drive it a little bit more as we get down toward the 
the hometown. Ooh, traffic circles, man. My nemesis. And I'm going to hop out right now, right quick, and check that lift axle. Okay, everything is down. That, you know that's, the, that's the, something that I am really frustrated with this truck. It's such a great truck. Just does not have that lift axle indicator in the cab. For the trailer, anyway. It's got the, the front, I can see, but not the rear. So... If, you, if I'm just looking in the wrong place and there is a lift axle indicator, let me know in the comments. But in the meantime, i got to stick my head out the window. So, uh, bottom line, next few episodes, there's going to be some some really... I, I think they're cool. I mean, I this game fascinates me. It's amazing to me that for as long as I've played it and as much as I've played it, hundreds, maybe thousands of hours, I'm still learning things and discovering things about this game. Uh, maybe not every time I play it, but I'd say at least, you know, every few days, once a week, I, you find out something amazing about it. And that that's one of my favorite things about, uh, what do I want to say? Not, well, it's one of my favorite things about simulation gaming, but it's something that I really love about modding and modders and the mod community and the very limited very limited amount of modding that I can do myself as far as editing. Uh, I've, I've worked in Blender a little bit. My, my background is graphic art and design, and I've done a ton of 3D modeling in Maya and 3D rendering, but that was more on the advertising side rather than what I think of as like the CAD cam or drafting side. So I've done... Uh, I've done 3D visual, I've rendered 3D visual for advertising projects, but never something like a truck, you know, or a wheel or a lug nut or whatever. So I'm, I'm dabbling a little bit in Blender, uh, but other than that, unfortunately, all you can do is sort of assemble 3D models that other people have built, and that, that doesn't feel right to me. Like, people put all these hours and hours and hours of work in, and then you just kind of whatever now like on the farm simulator side the giants editor is really really easy to use and there are some mods on the mod hub on the giants mod hub that straight up say you know this is prefab to be installed with the giants editor knock yourself out and about that i feel a little better there's like a there's like a little hand washing water bottle that you see sometimes on tractors. Uh, it's just a, a place to get some fresh water outside the tractor, so I guess before you get in, you wash your hands off a little bit. And there's a, a prefab version of that available on the Mod Hub. I have it, it's in two sizes, I wanna say. But I have that and I will open implements and slap that on the, on the flange, on the fender, on the bumper, wherever. So in that case, I feel like that's a little different. That's okay because the developer is straight up saying, like, I made this so you can put it on other mods. But as far as we're in an RJL Scania right now, the 4 Series, as far as me, you know, going into Blender and changing this truck in Blender or doing something different to it in Blender, I wouldn't feel right about that because that's not... That, to me, that's just different than than a developer saying, hey, here you go, here's some parts for you to put together in an editor. As far as I know, I've, I, if he has, apologies, but I, to the best of my knowledge, I've not heard RJL say, hey man, go ahead and uh, you know mess with my mod that I made. So, uh, so even the limited amount of modding that I've done and just the amount the amount of mods that, that you can find and the things that people are doing as far as, you know, really changing the game. Yeah, I guess anybody can make a skin for a truck. But when you get into something like pro mods or drivetrain revision, things that really change the way the game plays. Uh, pretty drastically, I think that is. That's amazing. And this stuff is being released all the time. You can always... 
Uh, scenery. You can always find new uh, new mods and, and new amazing things being released all the time. These trailer packs uh, that you'll see in some in some episodes coming up. Find a gear here. There's a better one. These trailer packs are, you know, I know, I know I read on forums or I see you know, some of the popular mods and I know people want like wind turbine components and they want like 60 meter long trailers and they want 200 ton trailers and they want all this crazy stuff. I want, uh, I just want really super detailed, high poly cargo trailers, curtain siders and walking floors and, and just regular trailers like you would see on the highway. They don't need to be, you know, exotic or, or uh, you know, some crazy application. I just like really super detailed cargo trailers. I guess, and I guess that's the difference. You know, you see people put they post videos of them building trucks and decorating trucks, and to each their own. You know, that's what makes the world turn is when everybody pushes at the same time. So, I I, I love seeing the creativity and you know the different ways people decorate trucks. But you know, there's a type of person that that just fills every slot on a truck with a light, and they just turn it into a big old Easter egg, and that's fine. You know. To each their own, but I like a kind of a stripped down, clean. Um, I'll show you when we get fuel here. We're gonna need to get some. Yeah. Uh, well, we don't need to. It says we got 800 kilometers in this tank, and we got 400 kilometers to go. But we're below a half tank, so I'm, I'll probably get fuel. When I do, I'll show you this truck. I found some LED light bars, and I've got the the Hella light pack just the sort of flat LED driving lights on the push bar. You know, I like I like the Easter egg effect as much as anybody, but I like kind of a clean, stripped down, simple, practical truck with a little bit of, you know, a little bit of swagger to it, but not that much. And I guess I like the same thing in trailers. Uh, I, I definitely like high poly trailers. I like trailers with a lot of, a lot of very subtle sort of things happening in the background, but as far as you know, great big long trailers with 25 axles that, that hold 200,000 pounds, that's not really my jam. So so I have found some trailer packs that, that really work for me, and there's ways to make them spawn in traffic. Uh, they come with some add-ons to make them spawn in traffic, and like I was saying earlier in the video, those add-ons are accurate in that they they tend to only spawn in countries where you'd see them anyway. I guess based on on uh, MOT guidelines and what is and is not permitted. So, super cool there. Um, let me see how we doing. So I was the crash that I was having that was making me absolutely mental was I was getting a crash when I got to a delivery and what I concluded was as it was filling the yard of the drop-off point as it does you know the, the the sort of game code has the the dispatch is all laid out but it hasn't rendered the vehicles because it hasn't loaded that tile yet so if I'm gonna make a delivery from uh, from from Rotterdam to Berlin. It's got the dispatch for all of Europe laid out, but it's not going to render what's in the yard in Berlin until I pull onto that tile, and then it's gonna load those, load those trailers and put them in the yard, spawn them in the yard. So what I was finding was, and this was specifically in Scandinavia, uh, which was how I track down the problem, like what what is unique to Scandinavia, and, and then more specifically, what is unique to ProMod Scandinavia. But what I found was, I would be fine the whole trip, but then as I got 
to the yard, and I mean like a block or two away, as it as it actually you know rendered the the trailers, spawned them, and then rendered them, and then rendered the the higher poly. When you know when you when you're far away, it's a low poly, just kind of give you an idea of it out on the horizon. But then as you get close to it, it renders the high poly. Well, when it would render the high poly, it would crash, and it it was driving me crazy because I couldn't deliver. So, and this is in my my uh, test profile that I built to try to go on the bug hunt. So then, uh, what I realized is if if I got into town and didn't go to the delivery point, and instead I went to sleep. If I went to sleep, and I'll show you those lights before we leave. If I went to sleep, sometimes when I woke up, it would let me deliver different trailers in the yard. Sometimes I would have to sleep twice. But that was the only way I could deliver the job. And if I had already driven from, well, I, I, the example I used was Rotterdam to Berlin, but this was happening primarily in Scandinavia. Right. Give it to me. There it is. Right. So see these LED bars up here? How player is that? Ba bam! Oh. Love the mods. Love them. So if I had already driven all the way across Scandinavia, I wasn't going to abandon the job and, and take the hit for an incomplete delivery. When I was you know, 200 meters from the drop-off point, that just didn't, that wasn't working for me. So I would sleep, sometimes it would let me deliver it immediately after I slept, other times I would have to sleep twice. But now the delivery is obviously late, but I still got credit for it and I still got paid for it. Just didn't get paid as much. So, uh, so eventually I, I did track it down and I'm super glad that I did because that was just making me crazy. Now I do still have, those crashes were pretty consistent. They were consistent enough that it made me make some changes in the game and it, for me uh, a crash has to be pretty bad for me to be willing to pull a mod out because I'm I'm just determined to make a mod work I hate taking mods out uh, I, I just I just stick with it till I make it work but this was crashing and it was happening consistently enough and it was happening at that very frustrating point in the job that uh, something had to change so I did I did track that one down. Now, I still occasionally get a crash in Scandinavia, and I feel like it happens when I'm loading scenery just at the same time that I'm saving. And how I figured that out is, I think the autosave is every 15 minutes or every 100 kilometers or something. I don't know. But what I realized was when I restarted after one of those crashes, it never restarted me right down the street from where the crash happened. It always started me, like my previous game save was always, it seemed like almost a full 15 minutes before. So, I, right, does that make sense? So every time it, it, I restarted from a save game, I would have to drive almost 15 minutes to get back to the place where it crashed. And I started thinking, does this have something to do with save game or auto save? So I did, I checked it out and that that is a thing. There can be some problems with that. And I guess it has to do with, you know, when the game loads scenery, it has to do some things with the scenery and kind of you know, digest it a little bit. And then it, it knows what it needs to save. But if it's... Alright. I need to clear my throat. I need to hit my dump button. But I'm getting to an interchange here. I'm trying to do it quick. Alright. 
that wasn't terribly sloppy. So if it's trying to do everything at once, I guess, if it's trying to load scenery, digest, that is probably not the correct term. If there's any game developers watching, uh, please pardon me for, uh, for saying that. But yeah, you know what I mean, digest, sort of, uh, you know, clear the bilges. But if it's trying to do that and it tries to save at the same time, I think that is causing the problem. However, I, I don't even know. Can you disable? I don't think you can disable autosave anymore. Maybe. Maybe. But even if I could turn off autosave, I wouldn't because the game crashes infrequently enough that I don't know how I would feel about disabling autosave so the game crashes less, knowing that then, if for some other unrelated reason it did crash, I might lose a few hours of driving. And that, that conundrum right there, that sort of blows my mind too. I cannot figure out for the life of me why it bothers me so much to have to drive the same, not the same route, because I know there was a time when I was really kind of focused on the UK, and I was just driving up and down in the UK kind of a lot. Yeah. So I was driving the same route in the UK quite a bit, so I can't say you know, that I don't like driving the same route, because sometimes I do. It's the same job. I really don't like driving, like delivering the same job two times in a row. It just bugs me. And I don't know why, because it's all just driving. It makes no sense to me. I don't know if that's like some kind of lizard brain, amygdala, some kind of hoot nanny going on. I don't know. But it it drives me crazy. So I'm gonna stick with autosave. I think I would rather. Have the game crash periodically because of something going on with autosave, but I have autosaves versus turning off the autosave, the game crashes less, but then when it does, I lose hours and I have to do my least favorite thing. That would, oh, I'm getting upset just thinking about it. Right. Oh, this is lovely too. This is one of my favorite parts of, about Scandinavia is these. Uh, when the road splits two and one, and you've got this, it's not a terribly narrow lane, but there's like no margin for error. And those little white posts on the right, you think they would be like just a flexible marker, you know? I mean, it's not like you want to hit them, but you think it, it would, it's not a guardrail is what I'm saying. A guardrail is designed to like keep you on the road those don't need to be rigid to protect you because all they're going to do is you're just going to crash into them. That's not protecting. So if it was me, if I was a traffic engineer, I would make those white with a reflector on them, but I would make them flexible. So if you do go off the road, uh, you know, you kind of run right over them. And I, I understand an argument against that could be, well, those stop you from going off the road. Yeah, they stop you by crashing your truck. So I think in real life those would not stop a uh, 100,000 pound lorry. But in this game they do. If you touch one it's just dead stop and definitely take some damage, which I did plenty of as I was learning to drive. And when it's the single lane, when you've got the guardrail on the left and those posts on the right, uh, that is when I say I love that about Finland, like Scandinavia, that's my favorite thing. I sound like I'm being sarcastic, but it, it's really kind of super challenging, and I do, I do love it. Oh. We got a ticket on this trip yet? I don't think we have. No ticket, no damage. I think. I think that should be a part of the game code as well. I think, oh, whew, huh, yeah, almost just watered her up right there. 
I think that should be uh, a factor as well. I think it should be you know, almost like you have a license, and the longer you go without taking any damage and without getting any tickets, I think that should determine how much you get paid for jobs or what jobs are available. I think that would be super cool. ETS-3, it's going to be a feature. I just totally made that up. I don't know if it's going to be or not. It'd be cool if it was, though. I'd dig that. Um, so, yeah, my drivers are making money. Now, here's the thing. When I do, when I make the changes that I want to make to the truck, and we are going to keep the 164. Uh, I'm kind of hung up on that. That's that OCD and immersion combo. I said we're going to drive the the 164 all the way back to France, and we are. So we are. Uh, but there's a lot of things you can do to this 164. Unfortunately, one of the things that I want to do is going to cost us like 250,000 euro. So as hard as my drivers are working and as hard as I'm working to get enough money to do that, when we do it, it's just all going to go away. And hopefully we do that somewhere in like Poland because then we still have to make enough money. Oh dear. Then we still have to make enough money between Poland and France that when we get to France, we can get the MAN that we've been talking about. Although, to be fair, we're going to trade in the MAN that we have now and get that other one. So it shouldn't be, it'll beat us up a little bit, but we'll get, we'll probably get 100,000 euro for the MAN that we have now. And I think the other one is like 250. So 250 less 100 call it 150,000 euro, which is still a lot, but it's not, you know, 350. I think if you get a, a maxed out uh, RJL Streamline, you can spend 350 grand. So this ain't that. This would be like half that. Right. Everything's gone smooth so far, and that means it's all about to turn to poop. out uh what else uh oh on the tandems and the doubles something that i've noticed is not all of the delivery points are they're not all possible there are some deliveries that you just it's just not going to happen and I've also noticed I've got several, I've got some tandems and some, are they BDFs? BDFs, B trains. Is there a C train? I think there might be. Uh, doubles, tandems, B trains, C trains, BDFs. I've got a, a lot of different trailer combos now. And I found this in a thread also that there is some uh, discussion about where you let your trailer spawn and I, I guess as a modder you can code in various things into the SII that will prevent say doubles, you know, full length doubles from spawning in places where it would be impossible to pick them up because the front of the front trailer is you know, two meters from the fence. There's no way you're going to be able to get a truck in there. Now you can do the trick where you you go to the pickup point you select the job you accept the job and then you F7 and rescue to the garage and it will hook you up, it will hook the trailer up to your truck and it will send you both to the garage. It's a bit of a cheat, but if there's no other way to hook the trailer up, you know, that's kind of kind of what you have to do. And the only problem with that is I have done that and been spawned into a small garage or kind of a, an offbeat like Pro Mods garage, where either the trailer or the truck or something is glitched through a wall and it just rattles around, and you can't stop it, you can't drive it because it's jammed in there. You can't drive it, you can't move it, and it just rattles around until there's 100% damage. And even if you F7 again, the only place you can rescue to in this game is the garage anyway, which is where it put you that was causing all the damage. So there's nothing you can do but take 100% damage and then cancel the job and then rescue to the garage again when you're just the, the lorry 
and then pay you know, 200,000 euro in damage to get your truck fixed. Oh, it's the European Frustration Simulator. You know it is. All right, getting close here. And from here, I mean, we're right across the, is that a fjord? What is that, an inlet? Is that a tributary? Is that like a, not a Prometheus. Uh, not a peninsula. Oh, what's the, uh, not an actuary. Oh, what's, what's it called? An isthmus. Yeah, that's it, a Prometheus. Oh, yeah, not ultra, just really high. So, we're right across the, the Prometheus from from the Baltic states. I call, I, I guess I could call them, what, what is it, Latvia, Estonia, and, uh, you know, the other one. Latvia, Estonia. I'm not going to look it up, I'm driving, I got, got my hands full. Um, well, whatever the third one is, we're right across the peninsula the inlet we're right across from them so we'll take the ferry over i may uh i may deadhead over on the ferry just to give us more trailer options on the other side uh, but that being said we'll get other trailers spawning here is that right that's another question i have if if it's a Finland specific trailer will it spawn that trailer and let you deliver it outside of Finland how's that work I don't know um, Lithuania that's it Latvia Lithuania Estonia ah oh, I knew it would come to me so uh, so that was okay so we got choices we can stay in Finland spawn a job and take the ferry over or we can deadhead over I'll do that off camera deadhead over on the ferry and then hop in the hop in the job market on the the Baltic side and see what we got for jobs scenery scenery yeah if the game crashes here I will I'll just call it and see you next time it's it's made it this far I'm super pleased hey you know I just want to get an episode out of an episode you know me. So we will get this down here. Oh, getting so close. Can you feel the tension building? I can feel it building because it's like, will we make it with no damage? Will we make it with no ticket? Will we make it without falling asleep? And will the game not crash? So yeah. Uh, I mean, to me, that's kind of exciting. I get kind of a kind of a thrill. Helsinki, welcome. I've been to Helsinki. It's a lovely place. Just bring your money, because it's an expensive, lovely place. All right, loading scenery. Frame rate dropping, dropping. We just did our save game right there. Oh, frame rate. And I do I do swing wide with the the double back there when I can. I don't know if you notice when I come out of traffic circles, I I really go over the line into well, not into oncoming traffic because I don't do it when there is traffic, but when there's no traffic, I will cross the line to make sure I don't hook the trailer on the right side, which I have a bad habit of doing. I have a lot of bad habits. I, I didn't mean that to be like super morbid. I just realized after I said that, it sounded like, like I got a hitchhiker in the basement rolled up in a throw rug or something, but that's not the case. Not that you can prove.
Okay. Big trailer, so we're just going straight in. Hop out and take a look. All right, there we go. So we'll drop this off. We'll get our money, and then we'll we'll call it. How are we doing? Beautiful. We got three or four more trips, and we'll level up. Okay, folks. There you go. Thank you so much for stopping by to join the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of ETS Two, and we will see you next time. Take care now.